like you said quite a few times that you can't uh, prove which religion is is true right i believe so yeah and um i guess i'm just wondering why we should believe that any particular religion is true if we don't have a way of knowing which one is true yeah um how was your day? Good day. I I've seen you. You see, I seem pretty busy. At round one. Well, it's been nonstop really the whole day. Really? Yeah, it's been crazy. I'm trying to find the notes. So there they are. So let's see. You grew up in a Christian household. You wouldn't consider yourself Christian. Yes, I'm on the way. We talked about how faith is trust. Oh, you mentioned that you can't. Uh, can't prove the existence of, um, I think we were talking about specifically like the, the Christian God or any God at that point. Yes. Uh, you, you asked about, uh, Hinduism and you know, like yeah. that claim would be equally God. Gotcha. Um, so we, yeah, we don't know who is correct. Um, you still believe in Christianity. Okay. Um, cool. Have you thought about the conversation since we had it? Yes. Um, I wanted to talk more about like why I believe Christianity strongly. Um, there was a a discussion between multiple theologians of like what sets Christianity apart. Why is it successful? Like or kind of more accepted in like the Western Hemisphere, in Europe. Uh, and C.S. Lewis uh, overheard this conversation, and he he pointed out that it was it was grace. Grace. What does grace mean? Uh, forgiveness, mercy. Okay. And that uh, that is what talked about, uh, you know, Western and Europe, and how Christianity has become really popular. Is that what you're about? Yeah. Okay. Well, there are lots of people who who claim to follow christ um their definitions might differ from what i would i would consider it. Um, and the reason it was it's been more popular in these locations is because of grace is that what you were telling like what they, they were asking what why why is christianity so successful oh, okay what about what quality does it have that makes it like approachable and what's gotcha okay and that is that is grace yeah well, okay. that's something that CSS pointed out was unique to Christianity. Is that something that you believe is the case as well? I think so. Okay. Cool. Do you want to talk specifically about that? Sure. So um, I might have might have mentioned this earlier. Um, a lot of religions have the idea that you must earn your way to a good afterlife. That you must, you know, you work, you toil, and then you yes. you become deserving of mercy. I think so. Christianity doesn't that yeah, has a different the Christian understanding is that you can't earn your way into heaven because your debt is too great for you to open up. Well, the whole the reason Jesus came and died was a form of of debt forgiveness. It was the sacrifice that was supposed to atone for all the sin of humanity, so that they might be able to. Go to because in, in the Old Testament before Jesus, well, what happened is. Um, if someone would sin, and they would they would take uh, an animal to the temple, to be like a, a lamb or a cow, uh, and they would they would put their hands on the animal and they would pray over it, and then the idea was that their sins would pass on to the animal instead, and that God would judge the animal rather than them, and so that when they killed it, sin died with the animal, and they were clean, spiritual. Gotcha. Okay. So Jesus was supposed to be the 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 sacrificial lamb. Okay, I understand. I got you. Um, is there still like has Jesus saved everyone, and everyone is now going to heaven when they die? Not necessarily. Um, Jesus opened the way for people to get into heaven. Um, it still does rely on on belief. It's like Credit card debt, like, 
is is a is a big weight on a lot of people's shoulders. They can't seem to shake it off. Uh, and Jesus would be like uh, a man in a very nice suit, pinstriped gold watch. You know, this guy doesn't even need to consider like what his bank account looks like. His credit score is just yes. And he comes up to you and say, hey, come with me. I'll find you a good home. I'll find you a job. And I'll forgive all your debt. But you have to accept the offer. Could there be evidence? So you have you have to believe before is that what that's it's like that analogy? He is willing, but you have to accept. Okay. Uh, okay. What does what does the process of accepting look like? Can you describe that? I'm st I haven't gotten there myself yet, but this is the way I've heard it described. It's you know, when once you once you understand and believe that Jesus came, he died, he loves you, he wants to be in a relationship with you, and this is how you do it. And then, you know, as as your faith develops and you become confident, kind of the final the final stamp is his baptism. It is the ultimate outward sign that you are committing yourself to Jesus and his teachings and you know, he lives in you, he is with you, and then you go through life together. And uh, in order to get to heaven instead of hell, do you believe in hell? Is that it? Yes. Um, uh, However, hell is a, it's very different from what people think of. Gotcha. Uh, but in any of the case, uh, you have to accept Jesus's offer? Yes. Well, yeah. accept Jesus. Yes. Believe? Believe Jesus is true? Yes. Uh, and then if you do that, you have kind of punched your ticket to heaven? Am I understanding it correctly? You, you, you now have eternal life. Oh. And if you do not do that, you do not have eternal life? Well, okay. So, Hell is often described as like this really terrible, like dungeon of eternal suffering. Right. That's the kind of the. That's like what pop culture. Yeah, like. exactly. That's the word I was like. Thinking. Like Futurama devil, you know, red dude with horns takes you down and he keeps you there. Uh, there is there is some of that like imagery in the Bible, but the concept of it is. <laughs> Where hell isn't like a place where you're punished for it. Like it's not like some sort of torture dimension for God's giggles. It's not what it is. It's the place where he isn't. It's it's for, you know, when you die and you know you're brought for judgment. If you say I don't want a part of heaven, I don't want a part of you, I wanna I don't wanna be far away from you, I don't want anything to do with you. God, God made a space where that can happen. That's that's what hell is, and because He is the the root of everything that is good, it's just a place where evil is. Okay. So you don't want to go to hell, um, but if you don't choose Him, that's kind of the other option. Thanks for, thanks for your explanation. Now I know I understand how you what you mean when you say hell. So it is. Um, I'd like to get back to my my question. Um, so I think we established that if you accept Jesus, um, you have kind of punched your ticket to eternal life. Yeah. Uh, what hap You said that uh, what happens if you if you don't? Um, is that an automatic ticket to to hell? Like if you or, if you don't? Yeah. If you have if you do not accept. So, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of the whole whole premise. It's like getting married. You know, okay. you you spend time in a relationship mm -hmm. and if that relationship like if yeah. as the relationship grows, you get closer together, you understand more about each other. Yeah. And then, you know, there comes a day where you decide I want to do this forever. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if you if you do everything, right, and you get to the church and your understanding is that he loves me. I'm good. Like no, like you have to say, I do. I do is like the ceiling moment. And you have to kind of carry out the the, the marriage. You have to yes. act like you're married yes. and act like you care about whoever you're marrying. Yes. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. It's like, I guess what I'm asking is the opposite. 
what if you don't have that uh, marriage with Jesus? I know that's not like the term you use, but um, what if you don't do that? What's the what's the help? So you kind of just stay in like I love Jesus, but I'm not committed. Um, not even that. Let's just say that uh, you don't know if Jesus exists or does not exist. Um. Well, I I suppose then it would it would come down to to the day of judgment, and you know, people, it's un like there's a debate on whether or not it's like you die and then you are judged like immediately, or if you die and then you wait and then there's going to be a day when it happens. There's we don't really know that. This isn't clear from my from my understanding. So it's kind of like uh, yeah. the yeah. Jesus or God or if they're the same person. Um, kind of his call. Yeah, that, that, you know, up to see what kind of okay. there is. The Bible talks about how like everyone will have the opportunity to meet Jesus and accept him. Gotcha. So like there is you know babies or. People who are blind or deaf or, you know, people in the Americas at the time, like they would not have automatically been like doomed. They just, they would have had to approach it from a different understanding. They would have had, uh, had an opportunity. And I think there is, you know, a lot of creation myths do have similarities with them. So maybe their understanding or perception was simply different than we saw. There, there was another religion that had a somewhat kind of similar concept like that. Uh, would that be a way to know that that religion is true? So, like, in the, in the Babylonian creation myth, there's a flood, and in the Hebrew creation myth, there's a flood. Yeah. Does that mean that they're the same thing? No, um, not necessarily that they're the same thing, just is... Uh, if there was a story that uh, um, that if you accepted this uh, god or gods, um, you'd, you know, be granted eternal life. Um, but if you didn't, you'd, you'd have a final opportunity to, to do that. Otherwise, you'd go to a place that might not be super desirable. Would that be a good way to know that that particular religion? Uh, is true. Uh, I mean, in like Egyptian mythology, when you die, you have the different, uh, mm -hmm. I guess, sub regions of the afterlife where people stay depending on how they acted and what they did. So I suppose that could be like if you were devout, you get to be in a, or like if you were a, a warrior who died in battle, you might have gotten special honors in the afterlife. Uh, so I suppose that could be a form of devotion. Um, in Greek mythology, there is there is one afterlife called Hades, but there's a special part of Hades for like heroes and kings, and people really. And then below that, there was kind of the the hell of Tartarus, which is where all the monsters were. I'm I'm wondering if uh, this uh, belief regarding you know accepting Jesus Christ and you know, then having that, that opportunity, kind of last opportunity, I guess. Hopefully I'm representing that correctly. Um, it seems like you might be using that as a, as a way to know that Christianity is is true. Is, is, are you using that as a, as a way? My, to my defense is that in, in lots of other religions, the the journey to being redeemed it's about you it's about what you do it's about how you change yourself and i think that when we try to do that we might be successful for a while but eventually you know we all we all fail we'll have our struggles and our failings um and you know the gods that they describe we act like well you sin so i gotta punish you now you must suffer for your crime you know and it's it's kind of this it doesn't seem like a like a like a parent and a child where a parent might discipline but they still love it seems more like you are a peasant i am a king strive to be worthy of being whereas in christianity says, i love you 
You are my child. I want to be with you. But this is how we have to get through this. Hypothetically, if uh, if you're to discover another religion, that uh, instead of having that, like, you're a peasant, I'm a king, it was more like the story of Christianity where, you know, more like a parent loving, and you just have to, to accept um, this entity as, uh, you know, the one, one of many gods of the, the story, I guess. Um, would you, how would you know if that, that religion, hypothetical, hypothetical religion, was true, or if Christianity was true? Well, I, I suppose it would, would uh, Buddhism, for example, I don't know what to do about Buddhism, but I know uh, that the main idea is that there was this king in India, and he had a son who he loved very much. He didn't want to expose him to all the horrors of the world, so he kept him in the palace all the time. And then one day, Buddha walks out of the palace and sees all the, the pain and suffering of people. And he is, is struck by, like, inconsolable. So he leaves the palace, and he goes and he meditates under a tree. And that's where he kind of finds enlightenment, which the only way this pain can end is if people cease. So then, like, the Eightfold Path, from what I understand, is this path of, of selflessness, wherein you can, you can break yourself off from the Hindu idea of reincarnation. And once you die, kind of, it's like the end of you. And what they call Vana, I believe, I may be in this term It sounds vaguely familiar. I think you may have gotten it right. Um, let's assume that, that your interpretation is accurate. How, how do you know, how would you know Christianity is true and Buddhism is false? Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Doing good. Yeah, if you want, uh, we'll probably finish up in a few minutes and... Uh, if you want to have a conversation, we can do it. If not, it's okay too. I'm just here for free fruit snacks. Oh, you can take a you take, take the fruit snacks. That's all. It's all good. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess then it would, it would kind of come down to like intuition, how I feel about the situation, okay. because. Uh, Kind of the, the crux of religion is like what happens after you die. And because there isn't like a, a true scientific answer to that question, yeah. um, like we know what happens, like your brain shuts down, your body shuts down, uh, you might groan occasionally as air escapes you, but really you're just like, there was nothing going yeah, on, you were, it's just dead body. Um, and that's, that's possibly the truth, maybe, maybe just, you just cease. Um, but that doesn't really offer hope or, you know, there is, there is nothing you can then use to, like, ease the pain of someone who is dying. Because they are, they are terrified of just ceasing to exist. Yeah, understandable. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of comforting to know what will happen. And maybe it's not true. But it, at least it is something to to have hope in, so you can face death with some level of peace. Uh, and I think that if if my interpretation of Buddhism is correct, maybe you do experience like this ultimate form of peace where there just is no struggle. Um, but from my understanding, it's not like you continue to exist. It's like you, it's like you don't, you no longer are at all. You become like nothingness. What I what I think I'm hearing you say is like um, is comfort. Um, religion can offer a, a significant amount of comfort, especially to someone who's dying um, or believes they're about to die. And uh, that that's a good thing to have that comfort, but it doesn't necessarily have any. It's not a good way to know if that religion is true or not. It's just something that might be comforting. Yeah, I, I can't prove one religion's validity over another. Yeah. I it would be 
it would be more difficult to to convert to to Buddhism here in America than it would be in in other places yeah. like in Southeast Asia. So how common it is? Because yeah. of how common? Or well, there is like a bit of there is still religious persecution mm. today. Mm. You know, people churches have been sightings of shootings, but so have have mosques. I think disproportionately so. Uh, and you know synagogues and things like that. I think it's it's more common to hear cases of violence against synagogues and mosques okay, than it is to hear against churches. Uh, so there would be some level of incompatibility there. Uh, whereas in, in Southeast Asia, I used to know in China, Christianity is outlawed and persecuted against like by law. So I play the beach today. But it's also it's the belief system I'm most familiar with and that I've grown up with, so that is some bias there. Uh, in the end, I, I can't really say like what would make me, you know, think differently about Shinya than I do right now. Uh, I think the one thing, if I can, there's one thing that we might uh not be on the same page about and that um, would be like you said quite a few times that you can't uh, prove which religion is is true right I believe so yeah and um i guess i'm just wondering why we should believe that any particular religion is true if we don't have a way of knowing which one is true yeah, um, I'm pretty sure there is a term for people who believe like a little bit of everything. Um, yeah. But I think that is a discredit to the organized faith, like as a whole, because uh, you know they've existed. There are systems that have existed for, for thousands of years that uh, have given you know a lot of joy and comfort and better people people's lives made people strive to be yeah. more virtuous and uh, it, is, it is saying that those systems are incorrect partially in that everybody is kind of correct and you know picking different things out of different spiritualities to kind of make your own uh, which does happen within religions but not yeah. to the extent that you're talking about i guess i was i guess i wasn't really Getting at at that, at picking different pieces of religions. I guess just like if we hold a belief in a particular religion, but we can't really have a good way of knowing which religion is actually uh, true, if any. Um, I guess why why hold confidence that a particular religion is true? Shouldn't we just say, I don't know? Well, people probably tried that at first, you know, what happens when you die? I don't know. So people, people wanted to figure out what happened when you die. And they, they couldn't reach a, a scientific understanding. So they, they tried to look at the world and find a spiritual understanding as well. Do we have to have some sort of spiritual understanding? Can we, can we just hold withhold judgment until we figure out a better way to figure out what's true? We could, and that's a possibility, but we're very curious. We like to know how things work. And by by holding the confidence in a religion, does that help us figure out which one is true? I don't think so. I don't think it helps us figure out which one is true. I think that it can lead us to make our own conclusions about spirituality and the truth. And, uh, I think it can encourage people to, like, forward the, the path of, of self-betterment, um, gives them something they should strive for, strive to be. What would be, like... Like, if we had a... If we had a... Hmm. 
whatever is in that envelope. I guess if we if we value what is true, um, when we don't know if if we can't don't have a way of figuring out like which one is true or if any is true, why wouldn't we say I don't know if we you know don't actually have a way to figure it out for sure. Well, the envelope doesn't exist. Well, there, there is, there is truth and there is fact. <laughs> like, like, are they the same? Oh, like that. No. Okay. What's the difference? <laughs> oh, no. a, a truth can belong to an individual or, and it may be factual, but it does not have to be factual. Like the the truth of Christianity is that Jesus came, he died, he gave his, his life for us, and then from there, we are we are called to follow him in obedience. Because we want to show we love it too. But another person's truth might be they were born as as a man, but they don't identify that way anymore, and they don't want to be referred to as a man. So their truth is that they are or not generally. Can people have these things that they believe are true? Both of those examples, but it actually be false. Sure. Um, you know, someone yeah. could go up to that that woman and say, "No, you're a man. I'll treat like a man." But so what what function would that serve? You just insulted this person and their identity because you think they're wrong, and now you have made them combative, and they don't want to hear words you have to say because all you have done is insult them. Yeah, right. And you know, I, I guess why can't they? Why can't they do that? I think they. I think people should be able to believe anything they want, to, even if it's if it's true. Great. If it's not true, I think we also should. Right. I think we can agree on people have, should have that freedom. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, believing that certain like races are better than others is a. There, there. I think that's a terrible thing. Yes, there is a there is a certain line. I think that that people are are trying to find and figure out. Um, and there's a there's a certain acceptable threshold we should hold each other accountable to. Yeah. Uh, does does the belief itself have any bearing on whether it's actually true or not? The the entire belief is is founded on the hypothesis that it is true. It's does uh, that hypothesis have any bearing on whether it's true? Does a I'm confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. So, like, here's here's an example. Jesus loves you. Okay. If that is true, how should I respond? Well, he called me to to follow these rules in my life. So, if I love him too, I know he loves me. Then I will obey them. I, I guess. How do we? How do we know that Jesus loves us? Right. That he cares. Well, he came to Earth. And how do we know that he exists? Like, how do we? Well, you started with how do we know Jesus loves you? So I'm going to answer that one Go first. Ahead. I'll let you answer. I apologize. So you know, he came. Would have been easy for him if if we believe that he's the God of the universe. You know, he could have been born a, an heir to a, the most powerful empire. In the could have been born, you know, oh, okay. he's going to be the most influential person in this world. But he, he didn't. He, he came to earth, in, and the woman he chose to be his mother was a virgin who was about to be married in Bethlehem. He was born in manger. In manger is what animals eat out. It's like a, like a trough. Right? You think, you know... The glory of the universe is is in a in a trough yeah. in animals per barn. Like not the image of someone you would imagine. And then from there, you know, he grows up and he doesn't become some conquering ruler. He yeah. doesn't become a person of influence in that sense. He becomes a conqueror. He builds the trains. He finds <laughs> You know, people, what no one wants to associate with tax collectors because they're corrupt, fishermen because they're poor and sinful, zealots who are 
terrorists, essentially, or guerrilla fighters. You know, he finds all these uh, extreme examples of, like, people who have been ostracized, like, no, you're unfaithful, you're unclean. Turning against our people. You know, bringing the Romans down on us hard. And he, he takes them, he says, follow me. And he doesn't encourage a rebellion, he doesn't try to usurp the Romans. He decides to show them mercy, and he says, I'm not going to oppose or fight you on this. To the point where they take him, they strip him completely naked, they beat him, they whip him, to the po almost to the point of death. They make him carry his own, like, electric chair at the time, essentially, up a hill, plant him on the, on the cross, and then stab him. He suffered excruciating pain instead. It wasn't like he died of old age, or it was over in a moment. No, he suffered for the better half of a day before he died. And when he did, he was, he was further mocked by crowds and was crucified along with two thieves. There was nothing glorious in his demise. And he went through all of that. He went through his whole life full of humility so that he might die to redeem us. You know, why didn't he, he do anything to, to make himself important? So he didn't need to be. He was God. He was already going to be. It was never about that. I guess, uh, I guess that goes back to, um, like, I guess if you assume that, uh, that the, everything that you said occurred and is, is true. Um, then yeah, maybe that's, that seems pretty reasonable to come to the conclusion, right? I, I would agree with you. Um, I'll bring the water. I guess well, yeah, if we sure. can't, if we can't know if like, Jesus, like doing a or the story of Buddha, basically a Vishnu, sort of a one -on -one or any of these other, you know, you know, you guys, you got Thank me you. anyway. I don't know, I would want to start at the beginning instead of the middle, I guess. Okay. I don't know. Uh, so I guess, I guess the, the, the beginning would be, do you think that uh, life and earth and everything here is a coincidence? It's in all the variables aligned just right? For us to exist, which is possible, this happened. Yeah. Or do you think that there was some intentional design? And yeah, I don't know either, but I think so because it is it is so perfect the circumstances at which like the earth and life came to came to be. And you know, there's so many interesting and cool things about like biology or engineering that just fascinates me. I love that so much. And maybe it did just happen because it life just wanted to exist and so it did. You know, I don't know. Maybe there was a, a chemical soup somewhere in the deep ocean by a out like a lava outtake and it decided that chemical soup eventually developed an organism and that organism became and evolved and turned into everything we know. Uh Luca, I think, uh last common ancestor i think it was something like that something <laughs> it was like the first cell that started life sure i don't necessarily think that is the case it might be but i don't think it is currently gotcha. all right um i don't have any more questions for you but uh if there's anything left that you want to ask me you may how's your day going it's going pretty good talk to a lot of people been a good time. It's a lot warmer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> I expected it to be very cold. Is it, like, warmer than it's been the past few days here? I think so. Yeah. Wild. Like, I looked at it, and it's got to be more than, like, 50 degrees. Like, I thought it was, like, 50 degrees but on the forecast, but it, it's got to be way more than that. I don't know. I'm burning up. <laughs> you got sunscreen? I did. Yeah, I do. My arms got a little burnt before I, I had my sweatshirt on and I put it on my face and neck, but then I didn't put it on my arms. I feel a little toasty. I don't look too bad. 
Okay. Well, I, I do have some more time. Okay. So you want to tackle another issue? Sure. <laughs>